one girl sitting with her legs dangling over the deck, thinking, God, why am I not strong? Another boy's tears rolled down his face as he was just criticized and looked down upon, thinking, God, why am I not smart like them? Another girl bruised up by the side of the soccer field thinking, God, why am I not athletic like them? All these questions that were surfacing their head all came from something we call our so-called weaknesses. And in fear of humiliation, we've been taught to protect our weakness. That if people find out, I'll be looked down upon. People won't respect me the same. People won't look at me the same. In fear of that, they hide their weakness. They cover it up. With what? Their strength. We humans tend to be like that. But let me ask you, for how long? How long will you be able to hide your weakness? Now, with that being said, let me tell you a story. A story of Leonardo DiCaprio? <gasps> no. A story of Rosa Parks? <gasps> no. Then, it must be, is it? <gasps> John Cena? Weighing 250 pounds. No, I'm just joking. Uh, not him, of course. I will talk about Rosa SRK. If you're thinking, like, who's that? It has the same first name as me. Well, it is none other than the girl over, over me. It's, I'm right here. It's me. It's me. Yes. Now, since mom, I had this big issue in myself. I couldn't see. And if you're thinking, oh, she was visually impaired. No, that's not it. I couldn't see anyone. But myself, I thought I was just such a cool person, you know? I thought I was so unique. I was possibly the coolest girl in town. And what town? Coolest girl in Japan. I thought like that, you know? And if you're thinking, wow, that's weird. These are the side effects of um, Disney Channel. Just like heads up for your future kids. Now, I remember this moment explicitly where I was sitting down in my sixth grade classroom. And the teacher was passing out blank papers. And she told us, write down your strengths and weaknesses. I was astonished, like, what? Weaknesses? Do I have weaknesses? I don't think she knows me. No. Um, if you're thinking, wow, she was quite the narcissist at that point. Um, uh, it's not like that, you see. Um, weakness is formed when you do something without your ultimate best, and someone decides to comment on it. If nobody comments on such, we don't think that that particular thing is our weakness. Because we humans aren't like that. We think that we're so-so in everything, right? That we're so-so in this one, we're so-so in this one. We're not necessarily bad. For instance, art. Let's say art. Since small, I bet all of us, we thought we're great artists. Any little scribble we drew deserves Mona Lisa kind of attention. We thought like that. But if someone down the line comes and goes like, oh, that's a nice stick you drew there. And you're like, oh, um, that's no stick. It's um, Eiffel Tower. That little comment right there, you think it's so simple, but it starts breaking that person's confidence. And with that breaking confidence, you try again, but you fail. So you're like, okay, let me try again. You try again, you fail. So you're like, okay, let me try again. You try again, you fail. You try again, you fail. And you're like, okay, what is the problem here? Let me try again. I won't sleep the entire night now. You don't sleep. You try again, and then finally, fail again. And then what happens? You just give up. You just leave it aside. You're like, mm, maybe this is my weakness. It wasn't in my capabilities. I wasn't meant to do this, you know? It's part of my weakness, nothing like that. I'll just shove it aside, hide it like no one can see, like doo -doo -doo. Days go by, months go by, years go by, until that very day comes knocking in your door where you have no other option but to face this weakness of yours. You have no other option but to play and use that weakness of yours. Either that be history, arts, whatever it is, you have to play. But you have, you're thinking, I can't. I failed so many times eight years ago. What are the guarantees that I will be able to do it now? Let me ask you a question. Can you guarantee that you tried your best? I'll answer that question for you. No. Because if you did your best, that weakness of yours wouldn't have still been your weakness. You cried. You fell. You were so lost in low self-esteem that you lost who you were. 
You lost who you were. You were so clouded by this idea of weakness that you didn't even take time to figure out what is this particular thing you're bad at. How can one person stand firmly with broken legs? You wanted others to see the best out of you when you yourself couldn't even see the best out in yourself. You wanted others to see the best out of your weakness when you didn't even know what was the best out in your weakness. These are the situations that we go through. But questions like, can I do better? What, um, did I do my best? Will always haunt you. And that is the answer to a question that even I didn't know the answer to till the last few months of high school and the beginning few months of university. You see, the best comes out when you have nothing to exhort but that as your last source. You use that as your last hope, and you see no other option but one straight rule wrote, and that you have to do it. There's no other option of shoving it aside. I'll just do it later. There's no shoving it aside. It's one straight option. You have to do it. There's no other option. You have to succeed. There's no failure involved. You must succeed. It's a one-way path that you all must take. Because you know if you fail, you will fall rock bottom. To better comprehend this situation, let me ask you one question and give you examples. What, when I say weakness, what pops into your head? What is the first thing that you think of? Do you think of like those movies when the girl, is boy, girl and the boy is like, oh, you're my weakness, let me protect you. Like, oh, it's so cute, like K-drama situation. Do you think of those? Mm, is weakness like that? You see, weakness for me means confinement, imprisonment, constraint. Imagine weakness as a living creature, okay? A living creature. You grab weakness, you shove it underneath the box, you close the lid, and you sit on it. You sit on it. Weakness is a living creature. The living creature has no access to food, water, nor sunlight. Do you think weakness will just like zip up, sit down quietly, like, oh, I get out, but I'll just be quiet. If you were kidnapped, you were put inside a room, would you, would you just shut up and like, oh, I want to get out, but if I get out, the kidnapper will get mad, so I'll just, do you think like that? No. Your weakness gradually gets louder and louder and louder until that very noise starts creeping inside of you and starts eating up your soul because that weakness that you shoved aside is a big part of you, no? If weakness dies, it does you more harm than weakness itself. Because weakness is a big part of you, but you don't know. You see, this constraint, before you put it, if only you could have heard weakness yelling, let me go. Let me go. I'm almost as strong for you to show me off to the world. Let me go. You were almost there, but you shoved me underneath the box. I was almost becoming a strength but you closed me to remain as a weakness. You just closed me. See, that's why I say, don't constrain your weakness because your weakness is not your weakness. Your weakness is your upcoming strength. This constraint, constraint in life will lead you to be so, so, so scared in life. And fear, fear is a very bad thing. Because of fear, maximum of the people can't do the things that they want to do. Maximum of the people are afraid to do the things that they want to do, to start something new. Fear of judgment, fear of failure, fear of starting something new. All these fears add up, and they start to build this big limit in your life. But in every situation, you'll find that there is a secret way out. Every single path in life has a secret route that you all must find. Either that route be easy, hard, or whatever, you all must find that route. And you might, if, when you, if you don't find that route, you have to make that path. And if you cannot make that path, please know it is not impossible to do so. You came here, you will go further. You made it, and you, you will find it, in fact. See, making a path is not easy. It needs belief, but not belief that, that you can do it, but also belief in yourself. See, what do you believe? In this question lies the answer. What was different from the time you tried then? And when the time when you time when you will try now. See, what do you believe? Do you believe in yourself? The majority of you people will say no. Like, I don't really believe in myself. Like, I don't have the strength to believe in myself. And honestly, like, why would we, right? We all are lame creatures. We did nothing cool in life. We did nothing. We probably just do we don't even clean our room. What would we be proud of ourselves? It's not like you learned 
how to walk when he couldn't even crawl, right? It's not like you learned how to talk when you couldn't even talk, right? It's not like we did any of those. It's not like we graduated high school and sitting in one of these chairs. It's not like that. Why would we be proud, right? Look at the mirror. Maybe not now, but maybe later. Look at the mirror and look how far you came in life and yet you don't trust yourself. You don't believe in yourself. The fact that you came here means that it was meant for you to come here. And the fact that you came here only means one thing, and that thing is that you will go further in life. You will go further. Try someone stopping you. The fact you came here, you will go further. See, in life, when you came this far, it means you will go further because it was meant to be like that. But you will find yourself noticing factors that you don't notice in yourself. You have to notice those things, and then you'll understand that you have to push yourself more. You have to create something. You have to improve yourself. You have to trust yourself. But we humans, we don't think like that. We got pushed. We got shoved. So what? People look down on you. So what? People criticize you. So what? You're just going to tilt there, stand there, saying, God, you gave me nothing. You gave me nothing. You were given everything you ever will need in this world. But we just don't acknowledge it. We just don't feel it. Because we humans tend to be like that. We are so fast into recognizing the things that we don't have, even before recognizing the things that we do have. Acknowledge them. Learn about them. Push yourself more to fix those, improve those qualities. And maybe then you'll understand there is not a single thing that you don't have. You have everything. See, effort is very important. But knowing where to put that effort makes all the difference in the world. Lastly, I would like to say for those who want to change because of this weakness for society or for somebody, did that someone or society ever try changing themselves for you? And here you are trying to change the perfect creation because of some imperfect soul. Mm. You see, the questions that the girl and the boy had in the beginning, all those questions were mine. All those problems were mine. And today I'm here on this stage because I found my answer. I found my answer and I couldn't have been much happier than that. You see, the answer that you think that the higher being only has the answer to, sometimes he put the answer straight in you. And sometimes we, don't, we just don't recognize it. But you need patience because the answer is in you and you'll see that one day. That little girl, me, when I was little, who used to think I don't have any weakness, I'm that little girl again because there is no such thing called weakness. We're trying to fly, find flaws in the perfect creation. There, you, there is not a flaw created in your perfect creation at all. You all were created perfectly, but it all depends on you. Who will you listen to? Will you listen to that man who told you, oh, you're bad in geometry, you won't go far in life, you're too emotional for this practical world? Or will you listen to the God that created you or the mother that gave birth to you saying, you were created perfectly and you have everything you will ever need in this world. Who will you listen to?